Hey, it's the odd man. I am here in the garage working on my daughter's boat. Had a few things to do, and among them primarily was the install of a new VHF marine radio. Perfect day to be working inside. So this is the unboxing and installation of this Standard Horizon GX2400 GPS VHF radio. It has two things that are unique. One is that it has a connector for the NMEA 2000 or N2K network. And the other is that it receives AIS information. I have never quite understood the appeal of these unboxing videos. You know what's going to be in the box. You saw it on the website, right? There's the manual, the cover for the radio, all the connectors, The microphone, which is connected to the radio. And almost, and importantly as well, is this bracket. Okay, so here are the parts unwrapped. This cover is just a plastic cover that fits over the front of the radio. The bracket. And of course, the radio itself has the soft keys for the menus. It's a DSC radio as well, so it's got the distress button. The distress button, you lift this and press the button to send a distress call. This is one of the unique features of a DSC radio. And this one includes the GPS. Most of them, like the old one that came with this boat, have to be connected to a network in order to work properly So, because they don't have a GPS that's included. So they must get GPS location information from the network. It's got the standard radio buttons, right? Squelch, volume and on, and then a dial to rotate through the stations. The back of it has this is a wire for an external speaker which I always thought was silly because it should be like RCA plugs so a guy could plug it into a stereo or whatever on the boat. Here's the power cable. This is the old school NMEA 0183 networking connections, which is always a nightmare if you have more than two devices, which is why this connector for the, you can see it labeled there, the NME, NMEA 2K connector is so valuable. It makes networking so easy. And this is for a remote microphone that operates the radio, which we don't have. And of course, this connection up here is just the antenna connection. And this other wire, you can see it's got red jacketing in there, goes to a loud hailer. Because this, this can act as a public address system too. But we don't have that. We don't have the other external speaker. And we don't have the 0183 connection. So all three of these will just be bundled and taped closed. For this installation, it didn't quite fit. So I bought a 90 that'll go on that antenna thing to run the antenna in from the side. 
And I had to buy a 90 for the network connection too. One of the main benefits of this installation was the simplification of the networking process. On the old radio and the existing GPS, you can see this diagram of the 0183 networking step is a little more complex. And it always shoots you in the foot because the manufacturers use different terminology. The N2K network is much simpler in that you just plug in the devices and it's ready to go. The downside, of course, was this boat didn't have a network like that, and I had to install it from scratch, which still wasn't a big deal. And in addition, the boat had this fancy GPS antenna, and it was not working at all. So by installing the network, it allowed that to function. The installation for this has been relatively extensive. As you can see, I've installed an N2K network on the boat. That's the backbone with the terminators at each end. There's one connector for the radio. There's one connector for the GPS. There's one connector or what they call a drop cable that goes to this Garmin unit, which is a fancy antenna and magnetic heading sensor. The fourth connector is power to the network that goes here to that fuse labeled electronics. You can see here some prior work I did on the boat. I created a wood pad up here to screw the radio to. This installation is relatively straightforward because there was a radio here before. The antenna connection is already here. The power connection is already here. As I noted, I installed the N2K network, so that's done and ready to go. And that's all it takes, other than the physical mounting, of course. There's no point in utilizing the radio's GPS because I need to hook it up to the network to send AIS data to the GPS anyway. This is the power cord. Plugs into this little clip that's on the back of the radio. And it's relatively long. But one thing I will do is clip this inline fuse holder out of the circuit. This boat already has a power supply switch and fuse. And I don't like having these little fuse holders all over the boat. I think it's confusing and unreliable. I like to have them all in the same location. So I'll replace the fuse for the VHF radio with the appropriate size, the same size that's in this holder. Except, of course, it will be one of those spade fuses. So the radio would fit in the space that I have for it. Final step, zip tie everything neatly in place. This is the first time the radio has been turned on and it clearly wants an MMSI number which fortunately I am prepared for. The MMSI number stays with the boat. So I'm going to use the same MMSI number we had before. Oops. Two, two, eight. Three, three, eight, four, three, four, two, two, eight. Successful. Okay, I am in the NMEA 2000 settings on the Garmin GPS, looking at the list of NMEA 2000 devices, and you can see the radio shows up here now, and the fancy antenna and magnetic heading sensor shows up, and then the GPS, the Garmin 
the Garmin 94SV, this device shows up too. So it all seems to be working. It does look like we're getting the AIS information from the radio. So all is good. That's a successful install. The main reason I selected this radio was to get AIS data. These days, the Coast Guard uses virtual aids to navigation, which only show up with the AIS data. And if you're fishing on big waters, it's really a desirable safety feature, I think. And we seem to be getting AIS data. This is the odd man, out.